when you look around at this defense core that you have right now, you've been part of some very good ones, some championship ones here. Uh, where does this one rank to that? And what are your expectations, not just for yourself, but for this whole defensive group? Uh, it's a pretty good one. Uh, obviously, we we have good veteran guys like uh, Schulte, Jack, uh, Dumo, myself. Um, we have also guys like uh, like Johnny and Petey that are, uh, are are becoming really good defensemen, and we have Rico, and um, we're we're pr- pretty fortunate to have the, those those young guys. And I think it it's a well balanced uh, decor from like perspective of offense and defense. Um, I, I rank them probably in top two, one or two, probably. Okay, the next question is from Wes Crosby of NHL.com. Go ahead, Wes. Hey, Chris, thanks for doing this. Um, obviously, usually uh, going into the playoffs, you would be coming off of an 82 game season, and that's not the case now. Um, so, how would you compare just how you feel physically after? not playing um, for the past four months uh, heading into this playoffs to how you would normally feel um, going into the playoffs after uh, immediately playing a season? I mean, there. so so when you finish an 82-game season, sometimes you're tired a little bit or, or you have um, a couple of bumps and bruises or injuries. Um, but you're going to the playoff the first round, the first game with so much hype. You're so excited to, to make it into the playoff and, and having the chance to play a uh, to play play those type of games so your, your energy kind of spike but uh, this time around you kind of have the chance to heal and and re-energize yourself so um, I think it, it's it's actually a good thing for our team especially the fact that we have a lot of veterans and um, the fact that you're um, you're healthy and and we have tons of energy so uh, getting back out there it, it's been uh, it's been fun there Everybody looks uh, fit and, and ready to go. Next question is from Seth Rohrball. Go ahead, Seth. Hi, Chris. Appreciate your time. Uh, yesterday, Mike Sullivan spoke about you guys uh, needing to work on combat drills and just, you know, some of the competition in, in tight areas and stuff like that. You did that today a little bit, uh, quite a bit, actually. Um, well, how difficult of that part of the game is that to reclaim after so much downtime, just, you know, that competition and you know, working in the corners, things like that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's always the like like every summer that that you uh, that you come back. Um, that's the area of uh, of our game that uh, usually training camps focus on battle drills because in the summer you try to be careful of each other and try to not to injure anyone. So um, that's a, that's the process we're into right now. We put a lot of focus on that, but um, at the same time we have guys that are uh, that are pretty. Uh, um, how would I say that they, they have a lot of energy. They have a lot of like, uh, enthusiasts out there on the ice. So battles are fun and, um, it's been a fun process so far, especially today. Next questions from Rob Rossi. Go ahead, Rob. Rossi, do you have a question? Unmute yourself. Sorry, Chris. Thank you. Is it unmuted now? Okay. Um, ha- when you're dealing with the CBA negotiations, how much does your experience with the escrow, uh, the way it's impacted you, and also knowing that you probably have one more contract ahead of you, uh, at least one more big one, um, how much does that factor into sort of the way you look at what's being offered and what you end up agreeing to as part of the union? I mean, I, I think uh, when you look at these negotiations, you both sides need to to really look at uh, what's the best for the game, and at the same time to to keep both sides happy. So, uh, it's a compromise on both sides with uh, with the uncertainties that are coming ahead of us. Um, the negotiation of the escrow and everything around it, uh, we we. We finally agreed on on some numbers. So, um, but the main goal was always to uh, make sure that we uh, grow the, our game and make sure our, the game of hockey is healthy and going in the right direction. Okay, the next question is from Dan Potash. Go ahead, Dan. Hey Tanger, um, 
obviously we, we had limited views uh, or limited opportunities to view what you guys did during the um, voluntary skates over the last couple of weeks. I don't know if there was much work at all done with the power play or, or at least a group, but how much are you looking forward to working on the power play? I don't think we saw, we did not see anything yesterday. I'm not sure about today, but uh, getting, you know, getting back in gear and, and getting that group going once again. I, I think right now we're, we're just trying to get back uh, with a good pace, uh, good execution. I mean, uh, uh, it's a, it was a long uh, layover, I would say. And um, I think right now it's just getting up to speed and make sure we're sharp and, and we're able to execute um, before we touch something like the power play that it's all about the execution of things. So um, I think right now the focus is, is mainly on uh, like I said, getting up to speed and work on our conditioning, battle drill, stuff like that. Uh, the next question is from Dayon. Go ahead, Dayon. Tanger, you and Sid and Gino have done a lot of winning here. Uh, you've won a lot of championships. I know we've asked this before, but I'm looking for something different now because this, this is an extraordinary circumstance. What would this mean to you? Uh, being a four-time champion, but to do it in these in this setting with everything that's happened this year, I mean, I, it would be unbelievable. I think uh, just winning a championship is is something that is uh, it, it's extraordinary. Like honestly, like you, you you grow up as a kid and and you just want to play in the NHL, and when you have a chance to be in in a team like ours and uh, being successful like we've been. Uh, to add another championship would would solidify what we what we were uh, able to accomplish in Pittsburgh. So um, it would mean it would mean a lot. It would mean uh, like all the others. I would say. Next question is from Jenna Harner. Go ahead, Jenna. Hey there, does the approach change at all in a camp setting like this, knowing just kind of how different the circumstances are right now? I mean, on the ice, it stays the same in the gym also. Um, it's just that we have to take precaution, wear a mask, um, wash your hands and make sure you, you practice uh, social distancing. Um, it's just about uh, doing those little details, but as far as going on the ice and and do what we do it it stays the same so um we just have to uh we just have to understand what uh what the rules and 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 what we have to do to to keep everybody safe around us and, and as far as the rest is it's the same thing next question is from rich walsh go ahead rich chris you you've played in tournament style championships like this before is there how much of a difference is this compared to what you would normally go through a regular Stanley Cup postseason or playoff? And is there a different approach to this at all? No, I would no. I, I'm I'm just thinking we we have to look at it like it's a when you when you want to be a, a Stanley Cup winner, you have to to win four series. I think in this case, you have to win five. It's just uh, one added series that um, you have to do. So. Um, I I don't think we're going to look at it uh, any differently than what we do usually. Next question is from Matt Vensel. Go ahead, Matt. Uh, Chris, this is just another question along the lines of the negotiations of the return to play stuff. But, um, you know, it seemed like, you know, from our perspective that everyone was really working together the entire time. I mean, do you think I'm sure there were some contentious moments, obviously, as you guys try to find an agreement, but it did seem like everybody was working together to find a solution. It wasn't kind of players versus owners or anything like that. Yeah, uh, like, yeah, like you said, like uh, the main goal was was to do what's right for, for our game and um, to make sure we keep growing uh, the, the NHL. And, um, you know, hockey has, has a long way to go. Um, in the world of, of sports, of major sports. So I think uh, the best thing to do was to, to work together and make sure both sides are um, agree on something that will help us continue to grow, uh, grow the game.